Hey guys, it's Anthony, welcome back to the channel. And today's video we're gonna talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, so if you trade that, you'll definitely wanna subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of pain, but over time I became profitable, and I believe that you will as well after you create your trading plan and build the discipline to follow your rules. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. You'll see a lot going on right here. Basically just have a 50 day moving average on here, a fib retracement, and then basically some drawings of where I personally believe the market's gonna go in the next coming two to four weeks. So basically, we're clearly selling off. And if you saw my last video, I took a long on ES at 44.80, and I said that there's no long setup on NASDAQ, but I was in a long at 44.80. Stop was below the recent lows at about 44.58 or 44.60. It was about a 20 point stop. I got stopped out in ES, and then uh, we continue to sell off. Now I'm, I'm essentially looking for the retracement to get in on a short to target the new lows on NASDAQ and ES, but I'll probably be focusing mainly on NASDAQ for that short trade. So as you can see, we have now sold off about, I think it's nine, yeah, 9% 9 from high to low. And we've had no retracement, uh, specifically no retracement from here. So eight and eight and a half percent without a retracement. That's, that's pretty rare. Usually after about 5% or so we get a retracement. So definitely after this Friday bar, there was some buying and it's high volume Friday, August 18th. I think that we are due for a retracement. Now, again, question is how high are we going to go? Might just be a feeble one to about 15,000 or 15,100 on the NASDAQ and then roll over again. I'm personally looking for us to get up to sweep this recent high here, uh, August 15th, just to trap a lot of bulls and uh, think that this is a bullish market structure shift. And then volatility will kick in around uh, September into October. And basically I'm expecting September into the beginning of October to be uh, pretty violent on the downside. But uh, again, looking for a relief rally the next one to two weeks I want to get a short entry at about the 50% retracement. So that's where I'm going to be targeting a short. Um, first entry being about 15,264. Again, I'd love for us to sweep this recent high at about 15,340. Um, but that would be about a 3 or 4% bounce from here. Yeah, so 3% bounce would take us to the 50%. 4% bounce would take us to sweep this high. Uh, we could, again, like I said, only get to 15,100. But I would love to short right here about 15,200. My stop is going to be above this wick here. So... Basically, what I'm looking for is to short about 50% at some point uh, near the end of August. And then I'm just gonna move my take profit to below this swing low. And then the stop will be above this wick here at about 15,600. So that's basically what I'm doing. Uh, ultimate take profit is gonna be down at about 14,200. And I'll show you why. If we go down, uh, that'll be about a three to one risk roll ratio on the short side. If you go to the weekly chart, we had this huge riot up. Uh, realistically, not huge support until about 13,500. However, if you just look, uh, there's a fair value gap here. See where my mouse is? Clear fair value gap on the weekly chart from about 14,440 to about 14,160. So I'm expecting us to trade down into here at some point by the end of September or early October. And then a lot of people think that's going to be the end of the world and we're just going to keep going down from there. But I really believe that a lot of people are going to be tricked and we're actually going to take out the highs we set uh, above 16,000 on the NASDAQ uh, into year end. There'll be a year end rally. My reason behind that is because of the 10 year and two year spread. If you just take a look at the 10 and two year, I have an alert at 0%. Every time the yield curve inverts, when it uninverts is when the massive crash is. It can rally until it gets to 0%. And once it gets back above 0%, then the real recession hits, the real mayhem hits, and that's when there's a big sell-off in a big bear market. So right now, we can rally in the market even as the yield curve uninverts, but once it gets back to above 0%, that's when the recession is going to hit. So I think it's going to take some time uh, into the end of 2024. I mean, into the end of, into the end of 2023, December or January 2024, we'll get about there, and then that's when the real pain and the real sell-off is going to start. I think it's going to trick a lot of bears, we have to keep in mind, you know, the market likes to make uh, people who are bearish lose money and people who are bullish lose money. So currently, you know, a lot of pain for bears, you could say, I mean, currently a lot of pain for longs, if people who have been long the top, but you know, it's just like, it's been super overreached, it, it needed to come. But then now I think that people are going to start to try to short this because maybe a lot of bad news comes out, but we just kind of rally into the end of the year from about October into uh, December and January. And then we actually roll over after we take out the highs. That's personally what I'm 
I believe in, but again, I'm gonna trade piece by piece. I'm gonna look at the market structure and see what I can take. So that's my whole analysis on the weekly chart on NASDAQ. Now we'll go down into a little more granular on the daily and the one hour. So let me just remove some of this. If we go down to the four hour chart, you'll see that there's nothing bullish. Again, still, if you look at market structure from left to right, what have we been doing? There's a swing high. There is a low. There's a lower swing high. Come down, lower swing low, lower swing high. Come down, lower swing high. Come down, lower swing high. Come down real big. And I think this is a capitulation, very aggressive selling. I think now we'll get a big retracement into the 15,200 to 15,400, trap some longs, and then roll over again in September. So again, Nothing bullish about this. No longs here. Realistically, no one wants to be in a long until we at least close below about 15,000 on the NASDAQ. If we do that, then we could start to look for longs and target 15,350. Again, personally, no longs for me. I'm gonna be trading intraday. It may take long or short intraday because that's a different strategy. But um, for swinging, I'm going to wait, like I said, till we get to about 15,200 or so, get into short at the 50% retracement and then target these lows below 14,600. Let's go down to the one hour chart, one hour chart. Now here you could argue, okay, maybe, maybe we broke market structure, maybe, but I wouldn't trust it because it was a wick, right? So you could say this is a swing high. We came down, we pushed above the swing high, but then we wicked, it was just a wick and we closed back below. So we could, we could totally roll over and continue lower on Monday and Tuesday into the week. I just think that we're really oversold right now and I think we are due for a relief rally uh, above 15,000, which is about two or 3% on the NASDAQ. So we'll have to wait and see. So now let's go down to the 15 minute. And then the 15 minute, similar idea as the one hour, right? We just broke above the swing high, but we still closed below, so not super bullish, uh, you know, the low time frames. So we basically just looked from the weekly to the 15 minute and we didn't see any high conviction setup for a long setup. So no one's gonna be going long NASDAQ this week so far. All right, I'm, I'm just saying we shouldn't, risk reward wise. ES, let's do the same thing. We're gonna to go to the daily chart and here is where I believe ES is now going to trade. So same same idea, uh, similar idea as the NASDAQ. You can see right here, we have the 50 day moving average broke below. I think that uh, we, you know, we closed actually flat on ES. We wicked below this uh, swing low and then we actually closed back above. So because of that, I think that a lot of people are gonna be tricked into going for shorts, but I think they're just gonna rip it up into about 44.80, maybe as high as 45.20. If you just look at a FIB retracement from the high to low. Yeah, 50% comes right around that 4,500 area. Uh, 618 brings it to 45.28. Um, what we could do is we could go for a short once we get to the 50% at about you know 44.95. And then we could just put our stop uh, just above this wick at about the 70% uh, retracement at 4.5. Five five as a stop loss, or four five sixty three as a stop loss. TP again now being below these lows, and there you have a two to one risk reward ratio. So this is something I could possibly take. I might take this. I might get it in both short on the ES and Nasdaq once we get the relief rally, uh, and then just trade intraday with a different strategy. And if we zoom out, I have a similar idea. I think we're going to go to the fifty percent. I think we're going to come down to about forty two eighty. And if you go to the weekly chart, you'll see why I have forty two eighty. Basically, uh, you can see some wicks, some trading here, 42.80 to the left, and then there's just a gap and some trading down about 42.70 to 42.60. So I don't really see us going really below 42.60 on ES. I think we'll get down there, trap some bears at that point, and then push up and just maybe chop around for a bit, but then go to about 4,700 into year end. This is personally what I believe. I think we're gonna trade into 4,700 on ES by the end of the year, and I think we'll hit 16,500 by the end of the year on NASDAQ for multiple reasons, um, but that's basically what the setup is, and I'm looking for shorts right now after we get about a two to 3% relief rally. So again, let's just go down to the daily. Let me remove this and remove the FIB retracement, and you'll see I'm basically expecting us to come into at least resistance to the, the left at about 44.70 to 44.80, so at least 2% rally, possibly up into just above this swing high at 45.20, which is about a 3% relief rally. Get into the 50% retracement before rolling over and heading back down to about 4,300 or 4,280 by the beginning of October. 
That's my whole analysis on ESN NASDAQ. Now let's bring it down to the four hour. We'll go all the way down to 15 minutes to see if there's a setup. So ES, very similar to NASDAQ. Um, nothing too bullish here whatsoever. Um, the only thing I like is that this four hour bar closed above the top of this red four hour bar. So because of that, it makes me have a little more faith that it's a short term bottom and we will push up and at least go into resistance to the left here at 44.10 to 44.20, possibly taking out the swing high. That's what I see on the four hour. But let's go to the one hour. On the one hour, uh, it looks a little better than NASDAQ, but again, we couldn't really close above 43.90. You know, if we got if we closed above 43.90, I would have had more faith that we're gonna target 44.37, but for now, you know, we could easily just roll over again. 15 minutes, uh, this actually looks pretty good. This looks pretty good because I like this close, uh, this Kindle close, 43.87. At least it closed basically around the same level, but again, to totally roll over, we needed to close above all those levels. Uh, if I had to close about 43.90, like I said, could have more faith in us going for that level, but nothing too confident. So again, no real confidence set up on the long side for ES or NASDAQ, but I believe we put in a short-term bottom based on other technicals. And I think that we will now have a relief rally up to the 50% retracement on ES and NASDAQ before continuing lower. Take a look at the VIX. VIX on the daily chart, we have this rejection candle. I would love to see some follow through now. Maybe we put in a high for the VIX for a few days or a couple weeks, and we just kind of just push down to the VIX as we get the relief rally in ES and NASDAQ, because remember VIX and the markets move in inverse. So when VIX goes down, the markets go up and vice versa. UVXY is another vehicle I look at for the volatility. It's very similar to VIX and big rejection there, but coming down to the 50 day moving average of support. So of course we could just keep turning back up, but I'm looking for a relief rally. And now let's just take a look at DXY. So on DXY, last thing here, you'll see that we did push above the 103.6 area and then closed just below. So now the question is, do we continue higher for 104.7 or do we roll over first for a bit, maybe come down to 102.6 before we go higher? And of course, I am in the camp that we will pull back in the dollar down to 102.5 and then push up into uh, 104.7 at some point in uh, early September, mid-September, and just go even higher into October. So this is basically what I'm expecting on DXY. and. This basically translates to NASDAQ having a relief rally for one or two weeks, and then having pain again, NASDAQ selling off for uh, September. You know, really appreciate it. If you uh, give this video a thumbs up, it lets me know you like when I make these kind of videos. Subscribe for more market analysis just like this. I just love sharing my own analysis. I love, tra I love sharing the trades I'm in and the reasoning why. So if you appreciate that, just hit subscribe. I do these analysis twice a week, every uh, Wednesday night and Sunday at 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So make sure you uh, look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.